Hard bumper music right here. I'm Marky e. Bilson, Tri City Sports Now, because it was a hard road trip for ETSU this weekend. Uh, you've heard a lot about it. Uh, the planes got delayed. The luggage got lost. They wound up bussing back from Champaign to ETSU following a 73-55 uh, defeat. And now uh, the first thing that Steve Forbes, who's my next guest, told his team is, you know, you might be 8-4, and four, but uh, there are no starting positions. Everything's open now. So I get. I, I did want to ask, though. I mean, I, I know that you know the travel. Uh, you know, is a disaster. We've all had terrible, uh, you know, travel stories. But I've mentioned this to you before. It reminded me of eleven years ago. First game after finals, uh, ETSU also had a, a different but similar travel circumstance to Syracuse, and they laid an egg up there, losing by 50. So, I mean, yeah, it was a tough travel day, but any thoughts of, you know what, going north December day after finals, do I want to do that again? Yeah. Well, it makes, it makes you think hard about it. You know, that's one of the reasons why you know, I don't get home much. My parents, my parents were at the game because they're from yeah. Iowa. You can't really predict the, the weather as you're in your right during that time of year. Honestly, Marky, I always try to do these kind of games, these buy games. I try to get them uh, in a bus. You know, but uh, sure. the problem is, I, you know, I've run out of options. You know, in the South, to play these games. And so, uh, you know, Brad was good enough to play us for ninety-five thousand dollars. So. Um, you know, we played the game, and um, yeah, you, you take a risk, uh, as you know, being from you know Pittsburgh in that area. You take a risk anytime you go north, and you know, I never want to put ourselves or you know our team in harm's way. And my frustrations weren't with the decisions of the, the delays of the flight. It was more how we were treated with our baggage and mm -hmm. the bus breaking down, and, and then the baggage not being delivered. And, us having to go get it the day of the game and not really getting our stuff until, you know, five, ten minutes before we got on the bus to go play the game. And now that didn't affect the game any. The, the, what maybe affected the game a little bit was the travel and the lack of, you know, we were supposed to work out at Illinois on Friday. We didn't get to do that. We didn't get to have a shoot around on Saturday because we, we got to bed at four. We had to let the guys yeah. come in. And so, um, you know, we were obviously – a little discombobulated, but no, you know, I'm not going to make that. Excuse. So I thought we were ready to play. I thought our guys were excited to play, you know, in, in, in Illinois. I knew it would be a hard game for us when I watched them play Gonzaga early in the year. They turned to Gonzaga over 22 times. And Brad Underwood teams play different than any team we play. They don't allow you to run off them. They overly deny. They uh, trap ball screens, basically. And you have to be able to make plays off without turning it over and make the extra pass. And we were doing that early, but we were not, we, were, we weren't converting. Yeah. We missed, but we turned it over. And the reality of it was that we put ourselves in a hole we just couldn't get out of. I did want to, I, I wanted to throw the one joke in. You mentioned about busing and all this. I guess that you would have been happier uh, playing on Forbes Avenue, Steve Forbes, because that's actually yeah. where the women's played yesterday uh, uh, against and, Duquesne. Yeah, yeah, the A.J. Palumbo yeah. Center is on, that's the main drag in Pittsburgh, and the uh, Duquesne University and their basketball arena is right there, so uh, on Forbes. When I was at Tennessee, I recruited DeJuan Blair really hard for Pittsburgh, and I was up there a lot and having to see uh, Forbes Avenue every time I went up there, so I thought I always got a kick out of that. Yeah. <laughs> Named after uh, John Forbes, who was a great Revolutionary War general and helped settle the area and all that. So there, there you go. Okay, that's the Pittsburgh history lesson that only I care about. Uh, I know a lot more people are going to care about the game. Did you think the Tisdale ejection was legit? Well, unfortunately, it's a, a point of emphasis this year. This big point, this big push about what they call a hook and hole. And it was up until this year when it's been a foul. Mm -hmm. um, but now they've, they've turned it into a flagrant or a one or two, and so it can hold it if you grab a guy's arm and pull him down. Well, the play happened so fast, and the guy ran over him that he grabbed his arm, and and he, he and by the letter of the law, yes, it was correctly called. Well, the problem I had was there was a foul pre, you know, he got run over. That's a foul. There was no foul call, and you know that happened, and so yeah, 
I understand if there's no foul, absolutely, and such. The uh, We're talking to Steve Forbes. Uh, the Buccaneers lost by 18 up in Illinois. They go, and they're about ready to play in the Sun Bowl tournament against UTEP as well as, well, excuse me, Wyoming first and then uh, possibly UTEP. I should point this out. Uh, I, I, I do wonder how the Sun Belt, uh, or excuse me, the Sun Bowl tournament is actually played 10 days before the Sun Bowl. But uh, I did want to ask this. I see Wyoming, uh, the RPIs or the NETs, and they're about 100 points, give or take. I mean, you know, what the rankings yeah. are today. Beneath ETSU... Uh, you know, I talk about UTEP, uh, which is, you know, and there was a rumor that you, uh, were off for the job at UTEP, but, uh, this off season, but this is a program that hasn't won an NCAA tournament game since 92, same as the Bucks. Okay. 52 years ago, they were the national champs, but a lot has changed since then. My question is, do you think that ETSU is the glamour program in the Sun Belt tournament? Well, according to what you just said, net ranking or those things, yeah, we, we have the best the best record, the best ranking coming into the tournament. Um, you know, this is Rodney Terry's first year at UTEP, so I'm sure they probably didn't want to bring in, you know, they probably wanted to bring in a field they felt like they could compete against because he had to, you know, to basically redo the entire roster. There's Norfolk State in there. You know, Wyoming... Typically, it's a good matchup for, uh, you know, UTEP, you know, Battle of the Mountain West. They have started out very strong this year. And I have, you know, honest with that, I really watch them. We've got so much to work on ourselves right now that I'll dig more into Wyoming in the next few days. But, but so, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's fair to say that. I mean, uh, out of the four teams, we're the one team that's been determined most recently, the NCAA mm -hmm. tournament. And so, and to the conference championship three straight years. So I guess, yeah, I guess you'd have to say so. Yeah, I mean, I know whenever you can put that national title banner up, I mean, that's big. But, yeah. you know, Holy Cross is not the same program it was in 1947. Uh, I mean, it's the yeah. same thing there. You know? uh, nice history there. Don't get me wrong. It's a still. I do, think, I do think it's important for our players to understand the heritage of Texas El Paso or Texas. West. Yeah. And some point this week, I have a 10 minute documentary on Coach Haskins and, you know, the, the, the national championship in 66 when, mm -hmm. you know, the first all you know, black team started in a championship game against Kentucky. I think it's important for our players to understand where, you know, how they got to where they're at today and people that paved that path. And so at some point this week, um, we're going to watch that. Yeah, I mean, it was always, whenever you heard UTEP and you'd always hear that story. I mean, I self, uh, as a kid, would always hear uh, the story, like you said, about the first all black starting five and uh, just what a pioneering team back in the day uh, that 1966 NCAA champion uh, was. Although I will say this, I mean, even the TV back then, it was on syndication. It wasn't even, uh, so the NCAA tournament has come a long way since then as well uh, and such. By the way, speaking of guys who came a long way, uh, Davian Williamson uh, had a nice day, uh, came off the bench, I believe uh, scored 19 points if my uh, and was the leading scorer. The starters against Illinois only scored three points. So, uh, well, you said all jobs are open. They're going to be determined in practice. You think that Williamson might be uh, one of the starting five against Wyoming? Uh, are you willing to make that uh, right I mean, now? I mean, I, I'm not, it's wide open, but you got to, if, if, you know, obviously Tisdale can't play in the game against Wyoming, so that makes it even, his opportunities even more. Um, you know, this is the thing about Davey, and it, you know, and it's something all, all, all players can learn from. He listens, and he's very coachable. And when uh, he tries to do the things that we ask him, do and he sometimes gets the opportunity, sometimes doesn't, and he doesn't cry out about it. Keeps on, keeps on going. And I think Saturday was indicative of a person who listened to the game plan and executed it. And that was the whole issue with playing against uh, Illinois was how bad our offense and our offense led to their, you know, they turned their their defense turned into offense. But it was partly why wow, because of our bad offense, and we, and we didn't. We didn't listen, you know. We explained to them that you know, it's not going to be a typical game. You're going to have to, you know, make, you're going to have to 
pick on the trap, throw it to the roll man. They're going to come help, and you got to make the extra pass, and you just got to make a shot, drive it, tip it. We weren't, we weren't doing that. We got sped up. We turned it over. We threw it where we weren't supposed to. But David even paid attention to the game plan. And, uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why he had a successful day in the game. Well, in addition to Williamson, I know you had 11 players that played, and that made a lot of sense to me because, you know, there weren't a tremendous amount of, like, 30-minute players, that sort of thing. Of course, Tisdale get, did get kicked out. But, yeah, if you're a tired team, yeah, I can see wanting to use your full roster. My question is, did you – you got four guys that didn't get in. And although, yeah, you walk-ons and all that – could say in this situation, I mean, when you look back, do you think there might have been uh, the opportunity to use the entire, and I mean, even, you know, the freshman, right. Walkman, right. and all that? Guys. Yeah. Um, we didn't have four. We, don't, we didn't travel that many guys. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had the only two guys in the game were Rad and Bernard. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I apologize to DeAndre after the game. He should play, and, and he didn't do anything wrong. I mean, it's just one of those things where in the second half, we kind of got going and playing better. We outscored him in the second half. And, you know, he just didn't get in there. And I, I talked to him about that actually today. Mm -hmm. I like DeAndre a lot. And he works really hard and he, he, he deserved to get in there. And I don't, sometimes that happens. And it's not, you know, you don't do it on purpose, but kind of got lost in the shuffle. Um, but other than that, everybody, I mean, Miles didn't play, walk on, but, you know, typically in games like that, they don't. You know, it's hard for those guys to play when we're, we're down. We're trying to, you know, get back in the game. And, and but uh, everybody, yeah, we, we tried to play everybody because obviously, you know, I mean, I'm not going to make excuses of that again, but uh, I think you could tell at the beginning of the game we didn't, and watching the film as I have many times as I've watched it now, we just didn't have any pop early in the game. We were heavy legged and, and, it was it was thirty to eight, I think, and all. That. But yeah, I, I was sort of thinking of somebody like DeAndre or Miles. You know, I mean, they're on the team, and uh, fresh right. legs could help. You know, I mean, even two minutes or so in there. I, I was wondering. I, I, I you might get a kick out of this. I was reminded of the old White Shadow episode. It was called "We're in the Money," where they went to Las Vegas, and of course the team just went out on the town, and they were dead by the time they played the game. And uh, Coach Reeves said, "All second stringers." No, if the starters, had, and it reminded me three points uh, scored by the starters. You know, yeah, you're down by how many points? I mean, it, it really reminded me of that old White Shadow episode and how he handled it. And I thought, you know. Hey, maybe you do get uh, the Goldsteins or whatever, and and the Go Go Gomez's of ETSU on the team and all that. Yeah, you didn't think what, I. What was what was the big man's name? I forget. Cool, uh, Coolidge, Warren Coolidge, Coolidge. and yes. By the way, Warren, he was uh, that was only the first. Uh, show that uh, Warren Coolidge's character was on. I don't know if you remember, he was on Saint Elsewhere. And they had actually played, it was the same producers, and he was an orderly at St. Elsewhere. Warren Coolidge, same actor and everything, but they had, he would wear a Carver High t-shirt on the show and all that. It was a bit, it was a, a minor part for him, you know, uh, put out, but I, the character actually was on two different series, Warren Coolidge, yeah. But anyway, there you go. Yeah, I'm in the money, and I'll even give you this, uh, the actor who played Baba, I looked that up, on Forrest Gump was in that White Shadow episode, so there you go. Yeah, yeah, and uh, his name was McKelty Williamson. That was a bit part in that episode, but yeah, Bubba from uh, Forrest oh, Gump. Shrimp. Yeah, mm -hmm. but then uh, there you go, the shrimp guy. And uh, yeah, it was pretty. Like I said, I'm doing all kinds of research. Mark Tinker, who was the executive producer and director of Deadwood, was the uh, director of that episode where the white shit where carver went to all right so there you go then go to Ve the champagne in las vegas i'm the only guy in the history of the world to ever make that comparison and such uh yeah. steve forbes uh but anyway let's see you got the uh the jobs open and all this and i wanted to ask about the roster and all this but the big news i guess like somebody who i thought maybe you could start coming in from uh oklahoma state He's eligible. Yeah. He's seven feet tall, and he even scored six points on the off the bench. Lucas Gesson, boy, I, you know, if you have a seven footer joining Armas underneath, that seems to me like a big, big addition and such. 
uh, are one of the reasons why the starting position's open is that you've got a potential starter in guessing? Yeah, no question. I mean, I think every spot's open, and he's definitely in the mix. And, you know, in Luke's defense, um, up until he found out, you know, he really had worked with, you know, the first or second team. He's been on the scout team because he's been sitting out. And so, you know, and it may take him a week or so to get up to speed on everything that we're doing. But he's a smart player. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to him being out there. You know, this was totally his decision. It wasn't anything that, you know, we're, like, forced on him or made him do. He, he wanted to do it. And so uh, looks a really good student. He's on track to graduate. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, I think it's going to work out good for him. I think our players are really excited when they found out he's a popular player on our team. And I think going forward, as you said, I think he's going to help us a lot, especially in SoCon. You mentioned uh, to the press the compliance director and the job that yep. she did in getting her him uh, guessing eligible, and uh, you spoke highly. What were some of the things that I guess the compliance director did that went above and beyond that you wouldn't necessarily yeah. see? She's really, she's really good. <clears throat> she's really good at her job. And okay, he's, one, he's done this he's won many uh, waivers, appeals, and she's good at she's got a law degree, law background. And, so she knows how to present the case, and and uh, and it takes time. It's time consuming. You have to pull together a lot of documentation. And the other the other you know factor in the deal was the, the Oklahoma State. You know they mm-hmm. were supportive of the waiver, and that's a big component when it comes to you know these things either getting approved or not. If the, you know the, the team that you're leaving is approving what you're saying, and that's why you see a lot of some of them, or a lot of them, many times don't get approved because the team that the players leaving doesn't support it. And so um, I wasn't optimistic. I mean, I, I, I didn't, you know, I've never these things. I don't know. You never know how they're going to go. And so I didn't really spend a lot of time thinking about it. I knew she was working really hard on it, and uh, I was very appreciative, and I've always been very appreciative of her efforts. I think that she's really good at what she does. Yeah, I know you said that she was the best uh, in the country, and I was like, "Boy, that's high praise because this guy has been around at a few places." Well, and I so, have, yeah, I have. I've been around, and I think she's really good. And, yeah, you know, it, it, it's an important position uh, to have somebody in that position that knows what they're doing and understands the rules and and um, and the processes of the NCAA, and um, and she's she's been fabulous uh, since I've been here, you know. And, she worked, she got Peter his extra, you know, his extra year. And I don't know, you know, people wouldn't know. I mean, the amount of work that she did to get that done was astronomical. Mm-hmm. The amount of paperwork and phone calls and, and you know, documentation that she had to provide. Um, she just has really done a really good job since she's come on board here. Kay Lennon McGrew. I don't know if we've mentioned it, but I just, that's the uh, compliance director. And, and it's also uh, a lot of times uh, athletic directors come from compliance. So I've got a friend who's the, his name is Chris King. He's the uh, AD down at uh, Texas Rio Grande Valley. He started yeah. as a compliance director at Campbell and Alabama and places like that and all this. So, yeah, you've got now with uh, Gesson uh, teamed up with Armas. You mentioned Jerkin, and that was a seven footer last year, and certainly Armas and Jerkin being able to. To spell each other, and you point being able to play the hot hand underneath that really, uh, you know, helped out the Bucks last year. I just look at this a seven footer to go along with Armas and Rodriguez. I don't know how anybody's going to get a rebound against uh, you guys this year. I, I mean, that, that seems Illinois did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I guess <laughs> that, that I yeah. may have spoken too soon right there. Lucas is going to be a really um, good addition to our team. And- as we move forward, I, I think there's possibilities of playing him and Milan at the same time, too. Yeah. And so, you know, these are all things that we'll get, have a chance to work through in the next few weeks. Now, now that we're through finals, we can practice a little bit more and won't have as much in the morning. We, we usually go twice. We, like, we just already, we already went at 10. We're going to come back at 30. And, you know, we got a chance to work through some of these things now and, figure our team out a little bit better. Yeah, and 
like I said, and of course, height isn't all about it. I mean, one year Army, when oh. Bobby Knight was their head coach, led the nation in rebounding, and they didn't have anybody over six foot six. He just taught them how to box out. So there you go. All right, the Sun Bowl coming up. You got Wyoming, and then possibly UTEP. And I'll say it if you won't. I think that ETSU is the glamour program in that tournament. You heard me. Well, there you go. I mean, like I say, you're named after the main drag in Pittsburgh. How can I get Steve Forbes, Tri-City Sports Now. 